Hi, I'm Jackie Tant on Connect, chatting with Dave Sheen today on all things visceral massage and my podcast, The Body's Built Better Podcast. Stay tuned. For this presentation, I'm going to talk to you about a condition known as Osgood Schlatter disease. Now, this was named in 1903 by Robert Osgood and Carl Schlatter, so they coined the term then. So it's been, you know, it's, it's quite an old condition. But naturally, when the 13 year old boy that plays football complains to his parents, oh, my, my knee hurts, or this part of the knee hurts, it's not really the knee in itself, it's the tibial tubercle on the tibia, so this bump along here. And then naturally you can see this extra bit of bump forming along here. Okay, so that would be like an, an Osgood Schlatter. But basically, the, another term is what we call a traction apophysitis. So this, where the, the ligament and patella, you can call it the patella tendon here, from the sesamoid of the patella comes down to this area, where the boy, if you like, is, is kicking, and obviously girls as well, because uh, a lot more girls are playing football. So where they extend the, the leg, it's causing like a reaction around here. So it's called the apophysis. The shaft of the bone is diaphysis. Where it grows from is the epiphysis and you end up with the epiphyseal plate. And actually on the teenager, it's still in, in the growth phase. And you've also got an area within the bone called the metaphysis where the marrow is stored. But for this talk, it's just simply about the apophysis. So where it's irritating, it attaches to the periosteum, which is like a sheet of cling film around the bone. And then within the periosteum, you naturally have um, like a blood supply. And but you've also got bone forming cells where, where, where you have these bone, we call it the osteoblasts, where they lay down new bone to the sort of area. So if you irritate the bone enough, then it's going to send new bone cells to that area. In extreme, it can actually affect the way the growth plate grows on the uh, the lateral of the femoral condyle. And if they suspect that, then they typically put the teenager in like a, like a full placiparis to stop activity from that sort of area. So, so it's normally on the teenager, yeah, where it forms around you. They end up like with a bump. They can do treatment for, uh, you know, where they use like a, like a, a strap around in this area. But um, sometimes what the parent might not realize is, is that, you know, the, the the, the teenager is, is not just playing football maybe on a Tuesday evening and maybe the odd Saturday game. As soon as they go to school, they're kicking a football on a hard surface with hard trainers uh, or hard shoes, yeah, that sort of thing. Break time, they are kicking a ball. Lunch time, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it's constant. So sometimes it's not so much educating the, the child um, about the condition. It's sometimes you almost have to educate the parents. Um, about trying because in extreme, you know, they could be put in a, in a plaster Paris. By the time that teenager is grown past that phase, as they hit in like 17, 18, 19, etc., then and then obviously the growth plates have fully formed, then the chances of having it is quite slim. Hi everybody, this is Dave Sheen from The Connect Show. I'm very excited to have Jackie Tan with me today. Jackie has assisted the country's best athletes, international performers and weekend warriors get out of pain, stay injury free and manage their well-being for the last 16 years. A professional dancer for 12 years and a sports fanatic, her knowledge of anatomy and movement mechanics has assisted her in providing specialized massage and movement solutions for optimal performance. A serial entrepreneur, Jackie is the host of The Body's Built Better. Is that correct, Jackie? Yeah. It is Body's uh, Built Better podcast. <laughs> podcast that sees her chat uh, with the world's leading experts in health, fitness, and well-being. Um, she's also had the privilege of chatting with elite and amateur athletes on the trials and tribulations in the pursuit of greatness. Welcome, Jackie. 
Thanks, Dave. Appreciate being here. Uh, well, I'm pretty excited today because we haven't had much on the, the visceral um, visceral massage side of things as well. So we'll, we'll get to that in a second. But you have been on both sides of the coin as far as professional dancer and treating athletes. Um, so my first question is really around what made you shift from dancing to treating athletes and working as a, as a remedial therapist? Well, actually, I don't know whether it wasn't an actual shift. I mean, I remember the day very vividly. I was in the car, I'd finished a performance and dad had picked me up and we were driving along and he said to me, Jackie, dance isn't a career and you need to think about what you're going to do. Okay. <laughs> that was Wise words. I, yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't think it at the time and it was, it was heartbreaking at the time, but you know, if dad says anything, it's for a very good reason. He's very pragmatic. And, um, it was actually the, the push I needed because I was in a, you know, a, a boring retail job at the time. And so I knew I wanted to be working with bodies and I Mm -hmm. wanted to be working with people like myself who loved moving, who loved performing. Um, and so, it was either going to be massage or mm. personal training. And we hear and a lot about professional athletes, um, but not as much from dancers who put their bodies under extreme physical conditions. Mm. So, I mean, some of the common injuries and dysfunction that dancers experience, can you sort of talk on that? Yeah, well, it's an interesting question because, you know, I mean, when you hear about uh, – it, it's not like you would say – what are the common injuries an athlete would have? Well, it's like, well, what type of mm. athlete are we talking about? Are we talking about a netballer or a footballer or soccer or boxer? They're all kind, they're all different, right? And yeah. it's the same for dance. You can have that ballet dancer or the contemporary dancer or the salsa or the hip hop, which is my background. And so it's all kind of it. It really does depend on the type of dancer that you know you're working with, and um, I guess you know the typically you could you could really see like that ankle and knee sort of issues mm. um but really it it just it depends on the type of dancer dancers are incredible at at thrashing their bodies and putting mm. their bodies through so much through hours and hours and hours of training and then again depending on that type of dance and the type of performer you know, in Adelaide here we have the Adelaide Fringe mm. and these performers could be doing a performance every single night, you know, three three to four times a week and then sometimes, um, you know, double shows on the weekend. And so they're throwing themselves around 100% of the time, several times a week. So, yeah, it really depends on on the dancer and obviously, as you would know and as a lot of massage therapists and my therapists know, their background and their history and um, that all sort of influences the type of injuries, you know, you could see as mm. well. So, Yeah, no, for sure. And um, you've started working with the association this year um, and you've been holding some successful series of webinars and workshops. So many of the punters at home might have already met you via, uh, you know, the, web- the webinars and workshops um, and they were called Supporting Gut Health with Visceral Massage, which I touched on at the very beginning that we were going to chat about that a little bit. So what piqued your interest in, in visceral massage? Well, it was actually my own injury. So I had a chronic hip injury. I had this for 18 months. It was really affecting my lifestyle and, um, you know, things that I really love doing. I love training and getting into the gym and that was being severely affected. And, you know, I saw lots of physios. I saw chiros. I was trying to strengthen. I was trying to stretch, use all of my knowledge and nothing was helping. And, and one day my trainer just said, see this physio and see what happens. Just, you know, mm-hmm. you've got nothing to lose. And so I did. And he, I mean, he's a good friend of mine now he's an absolute genius and and at the time he was working through the abdomen um and at the end of that treatment I was moving around and I was I was out of pain and I just like I was, what did you do and you know he told me about the visceral work and I think he did you know work with the liver and 
Um, obviously more at the time. This happened a long time ago now, but that was the start of it for me and just, um, you know, that journey into the mm. visceral world. Um, I went back and had a quick look at um, some of the webinar stuff that you've been recording and you talked about the um, the ability to improve mobility of organs mm. through the, yeah. So uh, what does that actually mean? I mean, what, what are you actually yeah. doing with that? Well, I mean... If, if you think about it, our bodies require mobility in general, and and the same, you know, it's from every layer, from the from the outside to the to the deeper layers to our organs, um, and so our abdominal cavity. It's a very small space, and it's all the the viscera, the organs are all squished in there, and you know they need an ability to be able to move and slip and slide in there. Um, and if they can't, if if the tissues that support them and connect them are restricted or fixated, then that's going to have an impact on the organ itself, mm. um, but also on um, on our ability to move well as well. I mean, if you think about shoulder and, you know, your shoulder mobility, if it's there's decreased movement there, whatever restrictions, you know, that how the co- body compensates well. I mean, you could get the movement then from whether it's the, the spine, the upper back, or whether it's the neck, you know, so it's this flow-on effect. It's the same thing with our organs. If the organs are restricted, um, how what's the flow and effect from mm. there? And so our organs need and require mobility to be able to move and slip and slide in our body and allow our body to move in ways that, you know, we require it to, um, as well as what you haven't said and what people may not realise is in order for them to be able to do their job as well, and so that is called motility. So the motility is the the ability for the organ itself to function, to contract and relax. So you may have heard of um, peristalsis, the the intestines moving waste mm-hmm. along. That's motility. And so, you know, when we have a loss of mobility or we're restricted, it can also impact the motility. And that's when, you know, people may experience whether it's constipation mm. or bloating or gut pain. So, um it just it goes very deep, and so it's very yeah. important that we keep our organs mobile just as we do our joints. Well, it's a really interesting space, Jackie, that um, you're teaching into there because, again, I mean, I've been in the industry for a few decades, but um, <laughs> uh, there hasn't been much, you know, in, in um, that sort of visceral massage uh, side of things. So it's really great that you bring that to our membership. Um, it's fantastic. And the other the other thing that you're doing is um, in the self care space as well, yeah, with um, stretching. So stretching techniques for clients as well as the therapist. Yeah. Well, I, the the webinar that I was asked to do at first we thought, you know, I mean, I'm such a huge stretching advocate, yeah. and any time I can talk about stretching, <laughs> I'll jump at the chance. Um, but this one particularly around. Uh, prolonging a massage therapist's career. Originally, mm. it was specifically around stretches. And when I was designing it, I just thought, you know, all my career, I've always liked to look at the body holistically, the person holistically, to take, you know, that 30,000 foot approach and see what's happening. And I just thought, you know, to give a better, um, a better webinar, to give more um, knowledge and, and, uh, I guess an idea of how to prolong a career. We need to step back a little bit further and talk more than just about stretching. So, whilst stretching was is so important for people, I think in general, I think it's important to note that movement in general is really important for the massage therapist mm, and absolutely. getting the headspace right and the mindset around why we do what we do and you know our own goals and um that's really important and then all, on the other end you know that whilst we look at the physical and the you know everything that happens within a treatment room everything that happens outside the treatment room is also really important and you know the rest and recovery and um I'm certainly one to put up my hand and after doing the webinars I you could definitely get a sense that this is common for massage therapists mm. that we are really good at preaching self-care and recovery and looking after oneself, but we <laughs> need a lesson in it 
um, in, in how to do it and look after ourselves as well. So um, that webinar really turned into that, I guess, that holistic approach of, of career longevity and looking at mm. different aspects as well as talking about stretching. Absolutely. And we can segue into your podcast there, I think, because um, Bodies Built Better um, is the pod- podcast. And um, no doubt you'd be there's some of the issues that you'd be discussing through that mm. podcast. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's so much fun. I get to talk to incredible people, whether it's mm. elite athletes or amateur athletes or, you know, health professionals in this industry, um, psychologists, like it's just it's really incredible to be able to talk to and pick the brains of these professionals about, you know, what they see in, in their day-to-day practice and what the science states in their um, modality and, and specialisations and um, really being able to share their knowledge with the listeners um, is is so important to me mm. to be able to educate people even further. And so um, it's also a very I'd probably say a a selfish endeavor as well because I'm a learning development junkie and so (laughs) I get to learn from from them in the moment um as well so we touch on so many different well on my my other uh, screen here um, next to us talking you know um I've been uh going through your website and looked at the bottom with all the quals that you've been doing you you are a junkie of sorts there um (laughs) and that's not even a which is great list (laughs) yeah 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 What's so important, people who sit back and go, oh, I've done this and that's it, um, you need to continue to learn, right? And um, and that just kind of just keeps building on mm. your foundations. So that's a really great thing. Hey, just getting back to the podcast. So uh, JackieTan.com um, is your website. Mm-hmm. Now, the podcast, I'm assuming you, you would get through um, some sort of app stores and that sort of thing, or how do you find that? Yeah, so if you want to check out the podcast, you can check it out on your favourite podcast platform, whether that Mm -hmm. is Apple Podcasts or Spotify or Google or Stitcher or all the other platforms that are out there I don't know too much about. But, um, yeah, as as long as you search for the Bodies Built Better podcast, it should Mm -hmm. uh, come up. Great. Uh, And in the future for more webinars and workshops, um, the the members at home, they can can obviously go through our – association website as well but there's also as i mentioned your website which has a, a wealth of other information um as well which is jackietan.com um jackie it's been really wonderful talking to you today we'd love to get you back i think on connect and just see how things are going a little further down the track you can talk about some more of the uh the celebs and a- athletes that you've been uh <laughs> been interviewing through your podcast as well it's such an exciting venture for you so that's fantastic so again many thanks um and to everyone at home uh jump on board bodies built better is the the podcast and um there'll be more information coming up via our website as well uh, into the future so thanks again jackie it's been a pleasure thanks dave okay take care and thanks everyone for watching bye-bye